Okay, let's be honest, filming low light shots can be extremely tricky sometimes. Most of the time it comes down to finding the right balance between exposing correctly without introducing a ton of noise. And having the right lighting equipment can be crucial. But this got me thinking, how much light do you actually need to film a proper night scene? And as I recently bought this Wi-Fi light bulb for around $10, I figured why not test it out. So let's just have a look at what I filmed. You have been away. For some time now. I hope you're okay. Wherever you are. I really hope you like this little sequence. It was honestly a little bit challenging. But I want to give you a little breakdown and some key takeaways to consider when filming in low light conditions that might help you on your next project as well. My first tip would be don't hesitate to move the camera around. I experimented a lot with the camera position. For example, I even taped my phone to the ceiling just to see what it would look like. In the end, I didn't use this clip because my phone can't really handle low light that well but it was a cool perspective nevertheless and I might consider using this perspective in other projects. And as there wasn't really enough space to get a lot of perspectives, I figured why not shoot into the mirror and this got me a really cool reflection on the right side of the image. I wasn't really thinking about it in the first place, but moving the camera around and experimenting a lot can really help to find new perspectives and new ways of filming. And most importantly, remove what is distracting to you. Add a picture hanging up there and the pillows and the blankets are also gone, which felt awkward at first, like who sleeps like this? But it felt really distracting to me and the pillow was also blocking the light, so I decided to just get rid of it all. My second tip would be try to focus on the story. If you have limited resources, try to focus on improving the things you have control over, like the story you want to tell. If I can't come up with a good story, but want to practice a bit, I oftentimes pick random objects and try to make a story out of it. In the past I've done it with a cheap plastic phone, just sitting on a couch, trying to create a little thriller scene in the style of David Fincher. For this project I picked up this ball and the photo and tried to connect these two with me still thinking about this person all the time, trying to distract myself at first but ultimately confronting myself with the reality. So nothing really complex but it can really help to find the direction where your project is going and maybe even spark some new ideas for perspectives or compositions. For example, throwing the ball was the perfect time to initiate this memory flashback. You have been away. And I haven't really thought of it beforehand. It just came to mind after experimenting a lot, trying to include this ball into the story somehow. And for me, it's really important to not only get better with my lighting or my compositions, but also with my storytelling. So I don't want to make separated clips that only look good on camera, but make a narrative story whenever I can. Even if it's just for practice, because in the end, this is the part that people will remember. And if you have an idea for your story, but can't actually film the specific scenes, have a look into stock footage. Some of you might consider it cheating or laziness, but I think if you use it as a way to support your vision, it can be a great tool to develop the story you really want to tell. I use the free website called Pexels, where you can not only get royalty-free pictures, but also videos. I only used three clips and added some sound to it as well, to really sell the effect of this memory flashback. 
My third tip would be remember shot continuity and cohesiveness. I had to reshoot some scenes because I was grabbing the photo with the wrong hand or my body was facing the wrong direction in relation to the previous clips. After all, these are small mistakes that can be ignored sometimes, but if something really obvious doesn't match, it can really pull you out of the story. My last tip would be try to use your light effectively. And what I mean by that is, if your light isn't bright enough, then consider moving the light closer to you. Like in this shot, I basically just held the lamp in my left hand to get enough output. But don't overdo it, because as in the example of shot continuity, it can really pull you out of the story if the direction or the amount of light doesn't really match up from shot to shot. I also want to talk about exposing in low light and how I try to avoid noise in these types of conditions. So I mainly filmed in S-Log2 which isn't really suitable in low light and I know in the end result it seems like it's extremely dark but as you can see on my camera screen the light was actually bright enough to lighten up the whole place and all parts of the image are well enough exposed to avoid any type of noise. Most of the time I overexpose between 1.3 to 2 stops. This is only possible because I have quite a fast lens with an f1.4 which allowed me to keep the ISO relatively low. So don't expect to do the same setup with only using your smartphone. As you can see, it's really possible to film in low light conditions if you put some thought into it. But there are also some downsides, because you can't really shoot wide shots and expect to lighten up the whole room and you're really limited in terms of perspectives and from which angles you can film. Because if you go too far away and have to bump up your ISO, you risk getting a ton of noise in the image. I really hope some of these tips might help you to film your next project in these low light conditions. And if you like this video, consider subscribing as this really helps the channel to grow and allows me to make more videos like these. Thanks so much for watching and I guess we'll see you next time.